you know, so I'll start to read and then I'll start to, to look for people have put in, here's what I did for six days in Uzbekistan. Here's what I did for 10 days in Romania. Here's what I liked. Here's what I didn't like. Here are guides that I found of interest that were good. Here's places I stayed at that weren't so good. Here are the issues I ran into going into any kind of a country. Or if you want to find out about, you know, how I liked the Rhodes Scholar trip through Scotland. Those, it's a great place to start searching. You know, Rick Steves is also another good place. There are a lot of forums, a lot of information. Have fun, read about things. So then once I figure out where it is I want to go and I have a rough shape of what I want to do, I start to figure out the flights. And you almost have to figure out your flights even if you're taking a group tour as well, if you're going with talk or road scholars. And I go into Google Flights and I've got the, the website there for you. And I start plugging in points A and points B, looking for pricing, looking for availability, looking for what the best connections are. These are all the kind of practical things you have to start worrying about as you plan a trip. Um, then I look for, you know, are there special offers out there that, that are um, maybe I did, wouldn't know of just by looking at um, the basic websites. And I've listed a few of them there. And then I've gotten old and lazy and I got spoiled because when I was working, I got to fly business class. So most of the time now, especially on long flights of six hours or longer, I'm trying to find ways to fly business class. And um, credit cards is in using the points for credit cards is become more and more important to me. And I don't know if that's important to everybody, but for me, so um, yeah, I've, I've, I've been, you, let, you when you get somewhere, you're in better shape, you're more rested, you're not as tense. That's part of, part of traveling and, and, and enjoying it. So if you can figure out a way to do that, I'd, uh, I'd encourage you to, and, and, and I'm a credit card junkie. I'm addicted to credit cards. And if you can show the next slide, I'll give you an idea why I say that. I have all these credit cards and you think, well, that's, that's nutsy. Um, but I've learned how to use them and, and the best way to use them. And um, I've generated a lot of points. So that big four week trip I took in October, I spent almost 900,000 points. And when I say points, these are points you get from your credit card that you can transfer to the airlines to your um, frequent flyer account. So, uh, and I get a lot of points. I've gotten a lot of points from sign up bonuses and from uh, using them kind of advantageously. So, Capital One Venture X gives you two points for everything that you that you um, charge. Doesn't matter what you're charging; it's two points. And if you and there's some other benefits to that as well. City Prestige, um, I get five points for every dollar I charge at restaurants and so on. Chase Inc. business card while well, I have a small consulting firm and I charge all of my telecom stuff to that and I get five points for everything I charge to T-Mobile or to Comcast or things like that. Chase Marriott and Hyatt cards, they're like $85 or $95 a year. These other first four cards are expensive. They're between $300 and $600 a year. Chase Marriott and Harry Hyatt cards, for, it's $95 or $85 for each one. I get a free night hotel for each one. So the cards more than pay for themselves if you're, if you're traveling. Uh, Chase United. I get um, some free luggage. I get some lounge perks from having their cards. City Costco, most of you know Costco. F Flex perks, um, they used to give you three points for every dollar you made a charitable contribution with. So I used it for all my charitable contributions. And then with Chase Aeroplan through Air Canada, I got a very sizable signing bonus for, for, for getting them. So like I said, I spent 900,000 points on that most recent trip. I still have a million points left. And uh, I use them 
judiciously and more and more I'm using them almost largely for business class travel, but you can use them for, for obviously for coach travel. And um, if, you, if you spend time and attention against it, it really gives you a lot more flexibility and benefits for your travel. Okay, I look forward to any questions. So, so Russ, I'll jump in with a question actually. Please. If, if I was gonna pick one card, maybe just to start with, or just, I, I didn't wanna have eight credit cards, I just wanted one. Is there one out there that you think has the best deal? Is it, or is it, I should go with my preferred airlines card, you know, find the one that has the best bonus miles. What would you recommend there? I, I, I would look at what are the bonus offers currently? Uh, and then I would not buy and get a card that's tied to an airline specifically. Um, so I, right at this time, I would probably go with the Capital One Venture X, but I don't really know exactly what their special offers are. If you go to um, the points guy, every month they update what special offers are available from signing up for new credit cards so that's a good a good way to start to investigate it as well yeah the the points guy i've, I've used that personally just for everyone on the call the points guy is a website you can just type that into google and he's got a great breakdown of where the best bonuses are for signing yeah. up for a new card or something like that yeah www.thepointsguy.com Okay, so um, the next slide is a little bit of a repeat of what I just talked about, getting your bonus points from new cards. Then when you're ready, when you've picked out your flights and you actually have to do some homework to make sure, are those flights available using frequent flyer miles or points? Don't transfer anything until you've made sure your flights are available and you can use those points for those flights. I've made that mistake once and it was very painful. I had 300,000 points stuck in United Airlines and not in one of my credit cards where there's a lot more flexibility. Um, so business class, I mean, you got to do it if you can. It's really so much better. Um, we flew last year on Emirates Airlines from Sydney, Australia to Dubai and they have a first class product that's amazing. And the, the most amazing thing about it is that they have showers in the, on the plane for first class passengers. So you haven't, you haven't lived until you've taken a shower on an airplane and it's pretty doggone nice. And they have a full-time attendant who's cleaning the, the, the shower in the bathroom between every passenger. So super cool. And then we flew from Cotter back to Philadelphia. And you get, it, you, it's not just a chair, you get like a little room with sliding doors. And the food's great and the movies are great. And it's just way relaxing, but it is a lot of points. But if you wanna put something very cool on your bucket list, flies either Emirates or Singapore Air first class. There, there not, a lot of airlines don't offer first class anymore. Uh, it's super special. Okay, next, next slide, next slide. I mean, um, I'm big into lounges. Airports are crowded and noisy, and lots of kids. And uh, so, a lot of the one of the things benefits from the cards I was discussing discussing is you get um, free membership into a bunch of airline lounges, and uh, you get food, it saves you money that way, it's more relaxing, um, and it's just, on, especially if you're on a hectic trip, trip it's, it's really good, and when you're delayed, it's really great, because usually it's not just your plane that's delayed, it's a lot of planes that are delayed due to weather, or who knows what, and at least it's a little bit of an oasis for you when, you're, uh, when, you're, when you can hang out in a, in a lounge. And there tend to be less families there. I don't, I don't know about you, but uh, I'm not used to little kids anymore. So it's just a lot more relaxing to be in a, be in a lounge. Okay, next slide, please. Um, I use, when, when, when I really feel I either don't have the time or the know-how, 
I will use local travel agents. And when I mean local travel agents, in the country where we're going or we, we hope to go. And I, these are some of the tra local travel agents that I use in these countries. I found travel agents in India. I found travel agent, I found a wonderful travel agent in Uzbekistan. And we were supposed to be going to Uzbekistan in October of 2020, but we had it canceled due to the pandemic. And um, so they're very easy to find. Everybody speaks English. And guess what? They're more knowledgeable about the markets you, you want to visit. Uh, no offense to travel agents in Minneapolis or the Twin Cities, but they haven't been anywhere. They really don't know. They only know from what they read and they only know from what their um, clients might have told them. And they really haven't been to that many places. And I'd rather, you know, use work with somebody who's been there or lives there or can really know what's going on. Um, and I, I find that to be really helpful. Uh, I recommend using local guides, guides who will accompany you as you go around a city or an area. Um, in the old days, I used to annoy the heck out of my wife and kids with a book open and pointing at something. Oh, that's that. That's this. That's that. But you know what? I wasn't seeing what I was supposed to be seeing and I was taking in. So if you're on your own, there's one, you know, that's a great thing when you're with a group. The, they have guides. Sometimes there's 20 people in your group and it's tough to get personal attention. But if you're traveling on your own, find a local guide and, and have them take at least, you know, half of the time. It's easy to find online. One other thing that I, we do a lot of times when we get to a major city before we go out with a guide, we'll take a hop on hop off bus. They're in the, most major cities that are, you know, heavily touristed. And it's really a great way to get situated and say, okay, what do, what do we want to see or, or you know, focus on with our guide? Or what do we want to go back and see on our own? So I highly, highly recommend that as well. Next slide, please. Russ, are you finding the, uh, specifically the travel agents through TripAdvisor recommendations or, or just Googling, you know, best travel agent? Oh, and yeah, you know? both. Both. Okay. But, 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 you know, I look for, um, what's the word, uh, um, overall agreement where every, where you start to see two, three, four different people saying, hey, I worked with Giselle in Norway. I, I, I worked with uh, Ravi in India, that, that kind of thing. Um, and I've been pretty successful about it. I mean, it, it's, it's not perfect, but, you know, on the large tours as well, you don't always get great guides, you, not, you know, mostly you do. So it, it can be a little hit, hit or miss, but I say it's about 80%. Okay. We had one situation when we did go to India for three weeks, worked with a great company who gave us, we had a car and a driver for three weeks and he took us all over Rajasthan and a few other areas. And, um, but what they did, and I didn't really know that was that they had they, they contracted out to local guides in the various cities. And some were good and some were not very good. And I, I not, wouldn't have hired. Um, so uh, just checking in and then saying, okay, who do you use in each city? Not just, you know, they say, oh, we, we use great guys. Well, who are they? Give me their names. I want to go online and I, I want to see if I can find out anything about them. You know, I, I view this as sort of a treasure hunt as well i'm i'm you know it's sort of a mental challenge for me <laughs> okay um okay every everybody always asks about you know what do i do for phones um well it's getting easier and easier and cheaper and cheaper uh with a smartphone well i i'm on t-mobile and you get basically free unlimited data not sell but data on T-Mobile when you travel anywhere in the world. And that allows you to tie into WhatsApp or FaceTime, which are, you know, basically they're video phone calls or you can just do audio calls with them. Super easy, basically for free. Um, most of the uh, phone 
carriers and from the US. So T-Mobile, Verizon, and AT&T also offer cheaper and cheaper phone plans where you can basically, you know, for $10 a day or $50 for, for X number of weeks, use you have pretty much unlimited phone service. Uh, lastly, almost everybody now too, treats Canada and Mexico as part of the US. So you go there and you use your phone just as if you're in Minnesota. So it's just getting easier. We use T-Mobile um, and basically can talk to anybody, see anybody anywhere in the world whenever we want to. So make sure when you travel, you have one or both of those apps on your phone as well. Um, big believer in if you're staying in any place for a longish period of time, don't stay in hotels. Stay in a place where you, you can have your own breakfast, have your own lunch, eat leftovers, do laundry, um, have something other than just a bedroom. You have a, a living room and it's a little bit more like living in the place that you're visiting. Um, and again, I use these two, Airbnb and VRBO. I look for uh, reviews and references all over the place, not only on their site, but on some other sites. Um, give it a try. It's really the best. It's really a great way. And put in a plug, my daughter and son-in-law own an Airbnb in Lisbon. And they own an Airbnb, that's an apartment, three bedroom, two bathroom, washer, dryer, air conditioned, plug, plug, plug. And they also own a, um, a house with a swimming pool in the, on the island of Madeira, um, which is a Portuguese island off the coast of North Africa. And it's a gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous island and a great place to visit. So try that, try that out, not, not you know, I get a commission, so let me know if you get to kids' place. Um, you don't need a lot of cash anymore. Almost everywhere uses credit cards. But having said that, it's always good to have little bits of cash with you, at least equivalent to 50 US dollars. Everybody, you know, I talk to all the people who buy, who get it through their bank before they leave. They get lousy exchange rates through your bank. Everybody and their brother is adding on a transaction fee when you do that. So when you get to your location, just use your ATM card in a, in a machine and, and it works just slick. I mean, you know, I mean, if you're in uh, Papua New Guinea, that may not work. But, um, but in 90% of all the countries in the world, your ATM card is gonna work just fine. Uh, don't take a lot out, um, use the money just for tips. The other thing that I would say is that in a lot of countries, credit cards re require pins. So like you have a pin for your uh, cash card, your ATM card, um, you can get a pin for all of your credit cards, your Visa, MasterCard, American Express. You got to call the, their, their 800 number and request one. Um, that is really um, to help you in certain countries. My, we were somewhere, we were in Norway a few years ago, and the bathrooms there, the public bathrooms required credit cards or, and, or coins if you had the right coins. And, but it needed a pin and my wife couldn't use the bathroom because her credit card didn't have a pin, <laughs> pin number. So uh, just, yeah, I'm doing that more and more. I wasn't very good about that. And then uh, insurance, um, that's a tough one. There's a great article, you can't see me, but in um, August the 10th in the New York Times business section, there was a really good article, travel insurance, what it covers and when to buy it. Um, you gotta have some travel insurance when you travel. Uh, we've had two instances. My wife had a serious injury in Italy and was in the hospital for 12 days and had two surgeries. Um, it's really good to have travel insurance uh, in those situations. Um, make sure when you buy your trip, don't use don't use money transfer or don't use checks use a credit card to to buy your trip because your credit card gives you a lot of insurance with it 
that we've that I've used for other things for hotels when we've had delay, delayed flights and needed to find a hotel to stay overnight. Um, and I I buy because I travel so much, not a individual trip insurance, but I buy an annual travel insurance plan. And the website that I've used for many years now are, is insuremytrip.com. For my annual travel insurance, I've used either AIG or Allianz, A-L-L-I-A-N-Z. Um, so that is uh, some tips, weird tips, <laughs> random tips for you to consider as, you, as you're planning your trip. And that really is my um, prepared remarks. Uh, there's my contact information. When I did this five years ago, I had a number of people reach out and say, hey, what about that? Can you help me with this? Help me. I'm glad to. I do this for fun. I don't do this for business. It's just help. It's just fun to have help people see the world, and get to the places you want to get to. So with that, I will um, stop talking and answer any questions. Russ, I'll kick you off with the first question here. Um, in it, I've got a number of questions, but we'll start with Maui. Um, what, you know, I, I've heard everything from uh, Hawaii may not be a good place to go this year because people that were going to Maui are going to go to the other islands and things like that, um, to just the disruption to everything that's going on for them to get back on their feet. It's not even a good idea to go there as a tourist. Um, any thoughts along those lines? And I know it's from kind of, you're unprepared for this question, but uh, no, 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 no. Thoughts. I, I, I would not go to any area that has had a, a disaster like that. Um, when you go, um, unless you really want to help. Otherwise, um, if you're looking to relax, if you're looking to see, then um, your trip is gonna probably be constrained and limited. I, I mean, that's certainly for Maui. I don't know, the other islands are probably not as bad. Um, we did, I mean, strange on nine, first of all, 9-11, I was in Tokyo and got stranded there for a number of days. And then, but we had planned a trip, the kids were little, planned a trip to New York City and um, it was late October. It was MEA weekend. We, we went to New York City and a lot of people said, well, aren't you? No, I mean, we we're not gonna go, we didn't go down to ground zero or any of that stuff, but the, the rest of the city was in very, very good shape and we had a good time and, and a lot of the hotels were starving for guests and stuff like that. And that, that just didn't affect our, our Trip whatsoever. Any other questions? Well, I'd jump in, Russ, with, and maybe if you've got a favorite domestic and then a favorite international, but a place that, you know, has the, gave you the wow factor for the trip, maybe, but also wasn't the most logistics heavy one to plan, you know, like, uh, has the appetite to go to Uzbekistan or something like that. So where's a place that's easy to get to, easy to work with, work within that you really still really enjoyed? Canada. I've been almost everywhere in Canada. I've been um, to Prince Edward Island. Uh, so I don't know how many of you saw the 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 play come from away, the musical. Yeah, I have. And, yeah. We went to Newfoundland because of that play. Um, <laughs> and it was, it's gorgeous. And the year before, yeah. just coincidentally, we went to Nova Scotia. Um, those are gorgeous places, easy to get to. Here to Toronto, Toronto to um, St. John's, Newfoundland, or, um, or to, Nova, to Halifax, Nova Scotia. It's very easy. Uh, and then we just rent a car and we drive all over the place. The things, in, I mean, they're the, the outer reaches of those provinces are um, not all that well developed. So you, we stayed at B&Bs more than ho motels or hotels, but beautiful, fabulous. Very cool. Yeah, super. And just people are 
beyond nice. I mean, just really wonderful. We've driven as far, the furthest Eastern point is the Gaspé Peninsula, yeah. which is where they only speak French or, you know, they call it French, it's French Canadian, it's not really French. Our kids, because of our time in Switzerland, um, speak French, so they could not understand a word that anybody was saying. So, yeah. And, and then, you know, um, I see Mr. Glassman there, Art and Adrian and Karen and I, we, we've gone to the national park, we went to the national parks together. We, so we went to, uh, to Yellowstone and the Tetons. Those places, if you wanna stay in the parks, and that I recommend you do, even though they're exorbitantly expensive and not all that nice, but they're very convenient. Um, you gotta book them close to a year in advance. So you really have to be planful. Mm -hmm. Russ, you just said, uh, this is Art. Um, we have traveled together and you are an incredible planner. Um, how do you, and I think we've gotten along well enough because we've gone on several trips, but how do you kind of decide ahead of time if you want to travel, you know, you and your spouse or with others? Uh, and how do you kind of make sure that you're going to be uh, compatible? I guess in my case, you're compatible with my significant other and I just get to go along. <laughs> I don't know the answer to that one, Art. I don't know. I mean, you know, it, it, everything's different. Karen and I enjoy traveling together, but I, I won't say we run out of things to say, but having another couple or, you know, I if you're going with friends or family, well, I, I wouldn't go with more than six people because then it becomes a logistical nightmare. And, and we we rent um when art and adrian karen and i have traveled together we're typical americans we probably take too much luggage and um so you can't take a four-seater car. wait a minute wait a minute i don't <laughs> take too much luggage well i don't know well that yeah well you're comfortable wearing the same clothes for a week i'm not and uh, no i'm just kidding and um so we rent minivans and um, so that's very comfortable for four of us uh, with all of our luggage. And, but if you got six, it becomes a little bit more, you know, logistically challenging. I know people do it with their kids and their families, but um, you know, I'm old and lazy and want to sit in the, want to, you know, don't want to deal with certain stresses. One follow up, you know, you, we just talked about luggage. And uh, you and Karen don't mind, you know, hauling the luggage. Adrian and I tend to try to travel in uh, with just carry-ons. Um, how big a hassle is the luggage? Are you ever sorry you did it that way? Yeah, probably when I'm in the middle of carrying something. But ultimately, I mean, so we're going to, to Iceland in two weeks and we're gonna be doing a decent amount of hiking. And um, I got to bring, bring big, heavy boots. And I'm bringing two pairs of boots because um, the first set may be very, may get really wet. And even though they're supposed to be rainproof, they're never perfect. So yeah, you're schlepping around two sets of boots is a pain in the neck, but I'd rather do that than have cold, wet feet. So, I mean, the, the, there's, there's no single answer to those questions. I don't know if, um... Anybody else wants to uh, add on to this, but Gene and I have found that when we go to a city now, we try to schedule a food tour. Um, and a lot of times we set it up through uh, TripAdvisor. And it's for us a spectacular way to uh, not only kind of cruise around and get uh, different food samples and sometimes quite a bit of food from uh, these different uh, vendors that they take you to, et cetera. But it's a great way to learn um, about the area and what's going on. Um, have you found some things that uh, kind of you try to incorporate in every trip? And I'm wondering if anybody else uh, on this uh, meeting uh, have found things that uh, they just think this really helps me 
get a solid footing when I arrive in a city. Well, I mean, in our most recent, Art and Adrian, Karen and I, we did a, a cooking class and happily it took place in a old remote farmhouse and uh, where you had donkeys walking around and the woman who taught the class didn't speak in very good English. And so we had an interpreter and it was pretty doggone memorable. Very cool. Yeah, cooking classes also a, a very neat way to um, kind of get a sense of how people live uh, in that area. You know, just to, one of the things, and this is all anecdotal, but a couple of the things that when I talk to people about trips or trips they may be thinking of taking, a couple of the things that make them balk besides the cost and logistics piece is the length of a flight potentially for an international trip and also the language of wherever they want to go um and personally i've felt like those may be shouldn't be your biggest worries usually you can get by just fine but i don't know if you have any additional thoughts on those i know you talked about flights and upgrading to business class whenever but you've been all over has language been a barrier for you yeah, I mean, it, it happens. Um, one of the first times I went to, to France, we went to a French, re to an Italian restaurant. And I thought it, I had ordered veal parmesan with a side order of spaghetti. And they brought out the veal parmesan with a side order of spaghetti. And I ate it. And then they brought out a, a full meal of spaghetti. And they thought I don't and I said why would I order two meals and they said you're American <laughs> so that was you know stuff like that happens you just you just gotta you just gotta roll with it um yeah we went to today any you go almost anywhere you're gonna find English speakers even in Uzbekistan you're gonna find English speakers it's it's that that part is not is not a hassle at all I mean, I'm a picky eater, so there are some countries where I got, you know, I, I'm not going to order the local food. Sure. You just live with it. Yeah. Russ, I had a question more about you. Did you grow up traveling a lot or did it really just start when you started working? Good question. Um, I really didn't leave the country until I was 27 years old. Okay. Um, but I had, my parents traveled a little, but I had an older brother who traveled a lot and lived in, lived in Spain and lived in Holland and took a year off and drove through Central America with friends. And I always heard about it, but no. And then, um, as soon as Karen and I got married, we started, we started traveling and our kids, people say, well, you, you know, I got to wait till my kids get older. Well, we took Amanda to Europe for three weeks when she was seven months old. And we brought a pack and play and, uh, and an umbrella stroller and a lot of diapers. And then we moved to Switzerland when Sarah was six months old. So they got used to it and they love to travel. Mm -hmm. So Russ, one of the um, big or I think one of the upcoming trends tends to be alternate travel sources as opposed to flying every place. Trains are getting a resurgence. Um, you've got the Rocky Mountaineer, um, which will take you across Canada, and now they have routes in the United States, certainly through Europe. I have a friend who's going on the Orient Express uh, in a month. Um, have you done any uh, train travel or I'm wondering if anybody else yeah. all has done train travel and uh, the experience and what makes it better and sometimes what makes it uh, not as good? Um, well, Karen and I, many years ago, we took the train from Banff to Vancouver. It was beautiful. You leave it, we left at about one o'clock in the afternoon. 
went through the mountains, got dark, have dinner, sleep, slept really well, got up in the morning, you're in Vancouver. We just took the train from Milan to Geneva, very beautiful train ride. Yeah. Um, in Japan, when we went to Japan, we took the Shinkansen, which is the bullet train. Um, amazing. We've taken the trains throughout um, France. The TGV is remarkable. I've taken the Eurostar, the one that goes between Paris and London three or four times. Oh, it's great. It's great. It's, it's, it's much more relaxing than flying. Much. Are you finding similar types of security measures with the trains? No, it's easier. Easier? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, if, if you're a if you're a terrorist, you'd rather blow a plane out of the air than uh, a train. It's easier. But I, I don't worry. You know, I don't worry about. I've had everything happen to me on on travel. I mean, my wife got seriously hurt. Um, got stuck in Tokyo. I've had an engine explode on takeoff. Um, in Australia, we went through a, a flock of bats, and the and it smelled like a barbecue, and the cabin filled up with smoke. Um, I mean, stuff happens. And I mean, if, if 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 you're very nervous about things, you are much better off than staying close to home, where you can do lots and lots and lots of cool things. And 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 not get nervous about what it is you're you're doing. And this this isn't for everybody. Yeah. But you know, we oh I forgot one thing. Um, Costco. Costco is fabulous for travel. They don't do everything, but their deals and their packages are really 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 good. And the people that you talk to in their travel department are really, really good. So last year when we went to French Polynesia, I did that all through Costco, booked everything. And we saved a fortune. We stayed at the Four Seasons Resort in Bora Bora, which is one of the highest rated places in the universe. And we got a Black Friday deal where we got breakfast and dinner. Breakfast goes for $50 a month um, a person. Dinner is a minimum of $85 a person. We got that thrown in for quote unquote free. I wouldn't call it free, but for you know a lot less than you would. And it was um, the whole experience was amazing. And um, so go look at sign up for Costco travel notices. Uh, keep an eye on them and you won't go wrong. They do Disney, they do New York, they do Canada, they do cruises, they do all that good stuff and um, really highly recommend them. That reminds me, have you been on many cruises? Been on four. Uh, I like them, but if you wanna see places, they're not good for, you know, if you're going to Rome on a cruise, the Rome seaport is an hour away with traffic. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you're going to dock at 6 a.m. You're going to get on a bus at 8 a.m. You're going to get to where you're going in Rome at 9. Um, Athens, the port is closed, Barcelona. Um, we've taken, a, well, we did the Galapagos Islands, which was a cruise, but it was only 32 people on the boat. It's not a real cruise. And then we've done the Windstar, which are smaller boats, no more than 300 people on a boat. And you get to go to much smaller islands and ports. The problem in the Caribbean is when you dock on a big ship now, it's not just your ship disgorging 3,500 people. There are four other ships in port. So there are like 15,000 people hitting that island at the same time for the most part. But I, I don't consider that to be fun. Yeah. Russ, where would, because you have not just the personal experience, but the family experience, you know, we like, I like to hear when people are 
able to do family trips either with kids or grandkids where have been some of the good destinations when you when your family was traveling together well, even with young kids especially that they you felt like they got a lot out of and you enjoyed sometimes that's a given thing. people say if you're going to do one trip in your life what should it be and i always say a safari if you can go out and find the time and the money to go on a safari it doesn't matter what age you are we took we went to south africa when the kids were four and two now that they get and then we took them on a safari when they were teenagers um when they're four and two they go oh look an elephant i mean that's what they get i you know right it, but but it's fun it's like going to the zoo and so everybody can get their level of enjoyment uh, out of a safari and it's just an amazing and amazing experience right right jeff it is an amazing experience no, nope. highly, highly recommended. Uh, it's special. Uh, it may be a one and done type of trip, but it will stay with you forever. And I, I would just add, when we did our last safari, we also went to Rwanda. And Rwanda is one of the three places in the world where you can go and see mountain gorillas in the wild, sort of like... Uh, what was it? Gorillas in the mist or something. Yeah. Um, anyway, and uh, it's the most expensive thing you'll ever do. But um, you got to hike. One day we had a hike. We're at 8,000 feet, two and a half hours with our guides to find this family of gorillas. And you get one hour from the moment you spot them. You have to leave within one hour but you're four feet away from 650 pound alpha silverback gorilla. And there's nothing between you and him. And yet, and it's just, you know, incredible. Yeah. So there's a lot, but you know, not everybody wants to go on a trip like that. So, I mean, go to, go to Montreal, go to Toronto, go to Vancouver, Go to Banff, Lake Louise, and Jasper. Uh, go to Nova Scotia. They're gorgeous, and they're and they're a lot. You know, they're cheap. It's cheaper, and it's very accessible. Hey, Russ, I have a question. We talked about uh, alternate transportation to the location you're traveling to. Do you have anything to add related to travel while you're there? For example. Uh, my parents uh, spent time driving in Ireland uh, when I was a young man, and yeah. uh, it seemed like it worked out pretty well for them. But have you had experience with with uh, renting a car and driving locally? Yes, I have. I, I would also tell you on my mo our most recent trip, I took off the right side of our van by making a bad turn. Uh, but but yes, I try. I like to drive. Art can attest. I like to drive. I, and um, if if a place is drivable, I drive there. I've driven Scotland, Ireland, Wales. I've driven in Australia, New Zealand. I've driven all over South Africa. Um, I've driven all over Europe. Uh, there are places I won't drive, though. I won't drive in Mexico. I won't drive in Asia. Uh, I won't drive in India. There... Um, you got to figure out something else, whether it's a car and a driver or other forms of transportation. So it's, uh, yeah, I, I'm comfortable. I really like driving. I, I want, I mean, so we were just in Italy, Art and Adrian, Karen and I, and we saw signs and we saw signs for, um, the Ferrari Museum. I didn't know about the Ferrari Museum. So guess what? We got off the highway and we went to the Ferrari Museum. And then we saw a sign for the Balsamic Vinegar Museum. I mean, who wants my, you know, I didn't want to go, but the others did. And we went to the Balsamic Vinegar Museum just on the spur. And guess what? We really liked it. Uh, and then we're driving, I don't know if it's the same day or another day. And we saw a sign for the Missoni factory outlet. Missoni is a really high-end Italian fabric and clothing and furniture 
So we went to the Missoni factory store and that was really cool. Their stuff was amazing. Um, that stuff you can do with when you're driving on your own or you have a car and driver, which gets very expensive to do that. But yeah, yeah that's I, cool. Yeah, I just want I, I just want to reinforce that the things that you can do that just happen. You know, when we were in Norway and we came across some of these streams that were just gorgeous and just stopped, you know, and walked up along the stream. And it was, um, it's a wonderful way to do it if one of the people doesn't mind driving. And yeah, Russ and I, I always say, well, I can drive. And he goes, no. So <laughs> that's fine. I have one other question that's a little bit more practical. And earlier on, you talked about uh, using uh, credit cards and points from the cards and airline miles, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, aside from having to develop the acumen to, to poke your way through all the various rules that these organizations have for their products, is there a downside to them? Uh, specifically, thinking of credit cards, are you ending up having a higher uh, interest rate because uh, you're getting these points uh, or uh, is it, uh, I, you know, I'm just basing this on the assumption that these corporations don't give things away. Well, they count on you not paying your balance. Ah. And if you pay your balance, you have no problems. Thanks. I mean, that, that, that's, that's personal finance 101. Don't, 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 don't borrow money from credit cards. Yeah. And, and worth noting, and you pointed this out earlier, Russ, a lot of the cards that give you the best benefits have an annual fee associated with them. Um, however, I have cards that have an annual fee and I only get, have them because I get more value than what right. they offer to me. So that shouldn't be a barrier to anybody, but just know going in, sometimes they have a fee and sometimes the way they make money off you is they assume you're not going to use your benefits in a given year right. so that you, they get their fee for not having to give you anything yet. I mean, uh, the, my American Express Platinum card gives us $50 every six months at Saks Fifth Avenue. And whenever we go traveling, we find we, if we find a Saks, we go and buy a box of candy, you know, so we got it, got something for free. Um, what's really good about these cards at the Minneapolis airport uh, with the America's Best Platinum card, if you're flying Delta, you can go into the Delta lounge. In, if you're not flying Delta, there's another lounge called the Escape Lounge, which is um, right near the entrance to to econ course and you can go in there and it's actually quieter and nicer than the delta lounges and because you know we fly in and out of, De of minneapolis so it's important that that's a great value to us yeah. all right well it looks like we're coming up on 11 o'clock here anyone has great. any last minute questions feel free to chime in otherwise i'm going to pull up our wheel here to see who's gonna be getting a gift card from us. And also if there's if there's a question anybody has that didn't come up or, or you didn't think of, please let us know. We can get it to Russ. Russ also had his contact info on the screen for a minute there. So, you know, anything we're we're happy to give you our feedback or or Russ's feedback too, if that's what you're looking for. Terrific. Yeah, of course. All right. Spin. All right. That's Judy. Judy. <laughs> awesome. We, 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 yeah, we'll be in contact with you right after this to get you that coffee gift card. Perfect. All right. And then if no one has any other questions, then I think we'll probably wrap it up here. Um, thank you so much, Russ, for joining us today. We really appreciate it. And I really enjoyed our conversation. I definitely learned a lot. Um, that'll be really helpful. Perfect. Another great presentation. Thanks, Russ.
Yes. You bet. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. All right. Thank you, everybody. Bye. Thanks, Bye. Russ. Take care. Thanks, Charlie.